as Java from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at get methods or getters and we're also going to look more generally at returning values from methods. So just to recap what we did in the last couple of tutorials, um, I could create a class up here if I wanted to, although you, you usually create classes in their own file and declare them public like this, but um, I'll create a class just up here for the moment, I'll call it person. And let's give person some instance data. So I'll say string name and I'll say int age. And let's give them some behavior with a method. So I'll say void speak like this and sys out um, my name is. And I'll add name in there. And um, in my main method here, I can create a person object now. So this is the idea of a person basically, it's a person class and now I want to actually create a specific person. So I need a variable that can refer to that person, I'll call it person1 and then here I say equals new person and here I'm magicking into being an actual person, well in software terms. And then I can say um, person1.name equals let's say Joe and um, person1.age equals 25 and uh, I could, if I wanted, I could call this speak method so if I run this um, now nothing's going to appear on the console um, because I'm not calling this method but I could say person1.speak down here in main and if I run that um, then it invokes this code here now often in computing you want to use a method to either retrieve some data or calculate something. And um, let's have a look at how I could have a method that calculated something. So I'll say I'll say void calculate um, maybe years to retirement, let's say. And um, I'll I'll do a calculation here, I'll say int years left equals and um, let's say this person retires at 65. Um, horrible thought, but there you go. Um, I'll say 65 minus age and um, I'll make this method just output that information that it's calculated. So I'll say years left here and again if I run that there's no nothing new down here but if I then call this method here so I actually invoke it, I say person1.calculate years left retirement and I run that then I get this 40 here which was calculated here. Now, um, supposing that I, I want this calculate method not to output anything, I just want it to do the calculation and then tell me what the result is. In other words, I, in here in main, I want to be able to get the result of this calculation and do what I like with it. How could I do that? Well, here you see that um, a, vo uh, a keyword, void, a Java keyword, and this says that this method um, does not return anything. We talk about methods returning values and I want to change that. I want to say that this method is going to return this value here. So the first step is to say int um, because I'm going to say this method returns a value of type int um, because years left is um, of the int integer type int. And, this, and the second step is um, down here at the bottom of the method I want to say return years left like this because here I've said it returns something of type int and here I'm saying yeah what I'm actually returning is years left and when you type return this will literally leave your method at that point which is why it's usually at the bottom although it might not be it could be somewhere else in your method enclosed in an if statement and it might only execute under certain circumstances let's say and I can get rid of this here and if I run that now so you don't see anything of course but in my main program I could create a variable of type um, int and I could call it whatever I like um, let's call it years and I could set that equal to and now I set it equal to um, the return value of this method so it looks like I'm setting it equal to this method but I'm not um, this is actually um, this is a method here of course it's this and this is just data a variable and you can't set a variable equal to a method but what, what's actually happening is I'm setting this equal to the return value of this method and this method is returning this here so years 
ends up being equal to um, whatever I return here, which is years left. Now I can output that and I can say sysout um, years till retirement and let's just output that years there in my main program. So this um, this return value has enabled me to get a value um, in my return uh, in my main program. And if this seems confusing at all to you, which it will do if it's the first time you've seen it, then definitely just type this out a few times yourself and just from typing it, you'll start to feel familiar with it. Just make it work and try returning different values. And um, now another really common thing to do besides returning the results of calculations is later on, um, we're gonna look at encapsulation, which means encapsulation means that the data that you declare in a class is hidden away from other classes. So in this case, it would mean um, later on, we're gonna look at how you can stop other classes like this, this app, um, class app that I've got my main program in from accessing that data directly, which it's doing here. And um, so motivated by that, we need some way of getting this information um, if, if we do actually want to make it available in the main program here. And what I could do is, in the same way that here I've got this um, this method that returns the result of a calculation here, I could have a get method that returns the age. I could say int get age. And notice I'm I'm I've got, I'm starting it with a lowercase g as always, lowercase c there, lowercase s. So it starts with a lowercase letter, but because I've got two words in it, I, I then capitalize um, this letter here to make it easier to read. And then I'll put in the brackets and then I'll just say return age. So this method now just returns this age. And in my main program, I could say, let's say um, int um, age equals, and I could say person one dot get age like that. So this will end up being equal to um, this value here, which is this and which at the moment I'm actually setting in my main program here. So it's a bit of a convoluted trail um, from here to here um, and it's returned here and then it's it ends up in this variable here. So, and you need to follow that through and sort of get your head around it. And I could do the same with string. I could return the string types. I could return the name here. I could say um, string, so I'm gonna return name, which is a type string, get name and I could say just return name. So these are getter methods um, or get methods. And if you're following a course on Java, you'll get asked about these for sure. And even if you're not, you'll, you'll absolutely need to know um, how to do this. And then in my main program, I can say string name equals person one dot get name like that. And just to show you that I can, I'm really accessing those values. I can say name is, um, Let's use the name here. And then under that, I'll say age is, and let's use the age there. And I'll get rid of this person one dot speed by commenting out, I'll just put a couple of slashes in front of it. So this is no, no longer gonna run. Uh, but if I run run this program now, so I get the, this runs, and then my get methods are returning the name and the age from my object, which I actually set here. Okay, so um, this, um, for the moment, I just wanted to show you how to have uh, methods that return things. You can also return arrays, by the way, in just, just the same way. Um, and uh, this is gonna make more sense in future when we actually um, encapsulate this data and hide it away using um, the keyword private or protected. But for the moment, um, just you know, just get, get used to um, how these methods work because you will need to know about this and um, here in this tutorial, we've looked at getting values from methods. And in the next tutorial, we're gonna look at passing values into methods, and we're gonna look at setters and set methods. So um, until then, um, have fun with this and definitely type that out and practice this a bit if it's um, new to you. And um, until next time, happy coding.